Look, everyone, you have equally with, with me the right to say, keep it as it is, change it a little, change it a lot, change it. We've all got the right to do that. The board will see everyone's thoughts. In your guideposts, you said that you were going to uh, run it past significant stakeholders. Who are those significant stakeholders? This is the entirety of the significant stakeholders? No, this will go to the board after. But I sent that out to everyone. Outside of the community present in this room, the Shimer undergraduates. That went out to alums. That's how you got it. It went out to students, faculty, staff, uh, board members. Who would be the other significant stakeholders? Am I going to somebody? Well, board members are donors, but well, I, did, I, did not, I did not send it out to make a donor list of people who are not Shimer alums. Well, Shimer alums and donors uh, and board members overlap. Yes. What has been your process for soliciting input from alums? Uh, we had a meeting with the alums on January 17th. Remember in the strategic planning document that we sent out, I asked everybody, again, from the very beginning, let a thousand flowers bloom. Whoever wants to weigh in on this, please do. Well, I mean, with respect to the document you sent out specifically, um, the only reason I got a copy of it is because it was sent out, I think, maybe on Cosmos. And Yeah, um, I sent it out. And the thing is that unless you're an alumnus like me who's been able to kind of talk people into giving them a Shimer account well beyond their graduation date, you don't get Cosmos emails, and I'm not sure if that's something you're aware of. But alumni, by and large, won't be able to do Cosmos. Well, it is something I'm, I'm aware of, and in fact, it's something that in my first year as president I've tried to increase. I mean, that's a problem that we have, which affects a number of things. If we don't have uh, valid email addresses, for all of our alums, we're okay. working on it. Yeah, it's and, better and, than it was. And I mean, I would agree with that. And I mean, I guess another part of my question is, um, I mean, maybe this wasn't your intention, but I think the rhetorical effect of the way you structured that message was something like this. Um, part of our accreditation is revisiting our mission statement. I hope you all will contribute to the numerous discussions that I plan to have about the mission statement and will submit any revisions that you want to make. Um, here are some guideposts that I think would be helpful in the consideration of our mission statements. And so, so I don't know if this was your intention, but the rhetorical effect of that, right, was I encourage you all to think about our mission statements and to use these guideposts as a matrix to kind of like operate out of. You didn't say, just think about our mission statement and whether it's good. I mean, it was it's almost as if the way that you did it had this insidious effect of saying, think about it this way when you would be considering it. And I mean, I'm not saying that was necessarily your intention, but it almost would have been more honest to say, I'm soliciting contributions, here is my contribution. I mean, do you, do, do you see what I'm... And I mean, I'm not trying yeah, to like, sure. get on No, 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 I understand. No, your point is fair. I mean, you're right. I expressed my opinion about it, as all of you are expressing your opinions about it. I'm expressing my opinion with the hope that I will persuade you as to the rightness of my opinion. As all of you are expressing your opinion, I'm <coughs> hoping that you'll persuade me of the rightness of your opinion. It's human, that's called human communication. But I mean, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, you said, here's how I want you to think about it, instead of here's what I think. That's what I'm saying. No, I put suggested guideposts. That's all I put. Oh, but a guidepost is different from a mission. That's what I'm saying. A guidepost is a guide to thinking about something, as opposed to here's what I think. And so what you were doing was you were kind of informing the way you hope these things would be considered saying, instead of saying, here's what I think, feel free to disagree. And I'm not saying that was like okay, sure. this trick you deliberately did, but I think that that's the rhetorical effect. Of well, you're right. Thinking. You're right. It wasn't a trick. And if, it, if the rhetorical effect was that this is what I think uh, best uh, defines and defends what we do, you're absolutely right. I don't think I've made any secret of that. No, you said this is how I think you all should think about it, not this is what I think. Well, when you say this is what I think about it, you are, every, every person's life is a defense of the good life. Every time you express an opinion, you're expressing that opinion with a view to affecting the opinion of others. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I would, I'd actually like to revisit what Andrea was, was trying to ask, because I think that's very important, and I don't feel like we've gotten a comprehensive answer to that. I know you stated you understand what, what we mean when we sort of counter our definition of liberal education, but I'm wondering, other than that, like, what you hear us as a group saying to you concerning the mission. 
Well, and, you know, as I've said, I've heard, it seems to, the, correct me if I'm wrong, that the greatest amount of, uh, of consternation is over my uh, connecting liberal education with liberty. Uh, that that somehow does not explain uh, or defend what we do in the classroom. Um, am I stating correctly the, the point, or, am I, or are there other things that find out? No, no, I, I think you are missing the point because, I mean, you, you kept listing these criteria for mission state, who we are, what we do, why we do it, I believe. Uh, here, here you have a collection of, you know, Shiner students, staff, faculty, uh, alums, trying to explain on our terms, you know, who we are, what we do, why we do it, uh, and there doesn't seem to be much inclination to try to examine those things on those terms to understand what's being said and why it's being said. Uh, it's 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 an active, you know, you're you're assuming this this privilege of framing questions from the position of president as to you know what this should what this should be about. Uh, instead of maybe considering what you know this constituent people, how how we feel and what we what we say and what we think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, go ahead. The mission that you're trying to convince is of the rightness of your opinion. And by definition, that can, that opinion can be neither right nor wrong. Is that right? <coughs> it's doxa. It's your perspective in the cave. Like I mean, it's what you see from your position, whether you're chained or not. The image is on the wall. Right. Let me ask you a question. Is the opinion that no opinion can be right or wrong? Is that right? No, no. It's a recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Just an <laughs> We're not trying to convince you of the rightness of our opinions rather than the validity of that. Yeah. And it seems that. Explain to me the difference. 